Welcome to a second example from chapter 9, a second full example video. Now, what we have here is a very similar, simple problem, um, just like the previous example. But now instead of two blocks pushing down on a beam that has one support, this is one block pushing down on a beam that has two supports. As a reminder to what we had started to think about in the previous example, there's three pictures that we really want to draw in our problems in chapter 9. The more setup you do, the more you're actually training your brain to understand these topics and be able to do them at test time in the final exam. Our goal is to understand the problem solving process. Our goal is really not just the number answer at the end. So our real picture, if you don't yet have it in your notes, it's useful to draw in. The block itself on the two supports. Then we draw the forces, so we know free body diagrams. And the forces here, what we want to do each time is to recognize how many things are acting on our um, board or beam or bar, whatever we were calling it. We have a support on the left side and we had a support on the right side. So it's useful to call these things support one and support two. That way we can keep track of them. All right, so in our free body diagram, both of those supports are pushing, and this is the free body diagram of the bar or board. Both of those supports are pushing up. So support one, I'm just going to call F1. Support two, I'm just going to call support or F2. And then we have the mass of this box. So FG of the box. And we are careful to double check the units. Whenever a student asks me, how do we know when to multiply by 9.8 and when not to, the answer should be straightforward if we understand why units matter. 40 kilograms is mass because kilograms is a mass unit. 40 newtons from the previous example is a force because newtons is a force unit. So we have 40 times 9.8 and so we have 392 newtons pushing downward. Soon we will have examples where the board itself has a weight and we will have to include that. But for now we're saying that the mass is so small as to be ignorable. Now we want to move on to our torque diagram and kind of remind ourselves why it is useful to have as a separate diagram. We'll go through the same steps, and I'm not going to write out all of the words. I did that in the previous example, and it's probably really useful to have that maybe on an index card as you're still training yourself on what steps to take in this torque diagram. But the first step is to draw the beam or the board. So drawing in the beam. It's a horizontal beam right now, nice and easy. Step two is to draw the axis. This is so important because we cannot define anything without defining an axis. Now, in this example, there are two equally valid choices that we could use. We need to choose an axis that makes our math easier. And in this case, it is going to be easiest to choose one support. Easiest to choose a support. You are trying to choose an axis that is located at what of one of your unknown um, forces so that it won't show up in your torque diagram. So I'm going to choose the right side. And if you want to prove to yourself, and this may be a very useful process, after we go through the example process with the axis on the right, Try the same problem and draw your axis on the left, and you will get the same answers for the two supports. All right, step three in our torque diagram is to label the location of the forces and the direction of those forces. The free body diagram helps us with that. The key thing is we only care about the forces that are not at the axis, so the ones that are not at the axis. And that's why our free body diagram is separate and important because it keeps track of all of the forces. Our torque diagram only cares about forces that are away from the axis. 
So if we start at support number two and we move to the left, the box itself is the first force we get to, and that's 392 newtons. And then we continue onward in our real picture, and the only other force that we get to that's away from the axis points upwards, and we've labeled that support one, so that's F1. The next step in our process, and again, I've written out these words in longer sentences um, or sentence fragments in the previous example. But the next thing that we're trying to write down is the distances. And I'm still going to write this down in all capital letters while we're still getting used to these problem types. It is so essential that we are talking about the distances relative to the axis, which is why our torque diagram is a very different picture than the real picture we might be given. This 392 newton force is one meter away from the support that we chose. This F1 force up is four meters away from the other support. This three never shows up anywhere if we chose our axis over here because there's nothing that is three meters away from our axis. It is so essential that we recognize why there is such a difference between what we care about in a torque diagram and what we care about in the real picture we might be given. Step five is to label the direction, clockwise or counterclockwise. So I will try to continue to use green for clockwise. So with this axis here, looking at each one of these forces separately, Force one, in order to make big circles around that axis, would cause clockwise rotation. And the other direction, counterclockwise, this 392 Newton force, in order to get it to make circles around the axis, if it were the only force involved, would have to be going in the counterclockwise direction, opposite that of a clock. So with these steps in mind, we can now write our torque equation. The torques clockwise are equal, when we add them all up, to the torques counterclockwise. Then with torque, we need the force. So F1 times the distance, the four meters for that force. And then we have the counterclockwise torques. So in this case, that's for the force, 392 newtons, times the distance of one meter. Then to divide both sides by four meters is the only math step in this portion. And that will get us that the force from support number one is equal to 392 divided by four, or 98 newtons. The meters unit cancels out, just in case we wanna double check, and we still have the newton unit. All right, that isn't the full problem yet. We have used one equation successfully to get to here, but we do wanna recognize that one of the reasons we draw the forces is because the other requirement for a static friction problem is that the net force in the system is zero. So in this case, we have the force one pointing up plus force two pointing up minus the 392 newtons pointing down, and that all equals zero. So if we add in what we have here then, we have 98 plus F2 minus 392 equals zero. So the second support, the support on the right side, we would get 392 minus 98, or 294 newtons. And that's for support number two, and support number one was the 98 newtons. This problem is now finished with these two different forces identified. And again, I want to make sure that we recognize that a really solid way to test your understanding is to redo this problem on your own with the axis on the left side instead, 
then you will have distance of three meters to this force and four meters to the other. And you will calculate first that the um, second support is 294 newtons. And then when you do F net equals zero, you will be able to calculate that support number one on the left is 98 newtons. You'll get to the same final answer. You'll just find them in the opposite order. So really key here to point out before we leave this particular example, the axis, sometimes you'll have a choice to make and you're going to want to choose what is easiest algebra, easiest math overall, and the easiest way to do that is to choose to put it at a location of an unknown force. We'll see that choice being made every time that we have an example problem and keep that in mind as you're going through and that all of our distances have to be relative to our axis, otherwise we are not thinking about um, the torque equation in the right kind of way. So we'll see plenty of more examples. Every time we do one, hopefully it will make more and more sense, and so I will see you in those next videos.